Did you know that the Savile Row suit is so iconic that in Japan, suits are actually called Sabiro, the Japanese phonetic for the famous street? Savile Row has been the home to the most skilled tailors in the world for hundreds of years, and though they do vary in style, the Savile Row suit is notable for its manly shape that commands respect and authority. And who better to introduce us to the esteemed suit than the fabulously well-dressed Jeremy Irons? Today we're taking a look at the clothing style of Damage, and hang in there to the end as I'll give you a very important warning. We're immediately introduced to the first classic suit, I mean Jeremy Irons' character, a leading British politician wearing a classic Savile Row suit. The Savile Row suit is distinguished by stiff shoulders and a tapered waist to give an impression of strength both in body and character. It is the opposite of the Neapolitan suit and does not look like a suit for lounging in coffee shops or on the sofa at home, though ironically, the classic Savile Row suit is custom made and extremely comfortable. Welcome back to For the Love of Suits, and if you're new here, we try to find inspiration for how to dress well from the best dressed men on the screen. Jeremy Irons is wearing a typically British, I'd even go as far as to say London, charcoal grey suit. It's a three-piece suit with built-up shoulders to give him that masculine look. The cut is close to the body without being too slim, that is the suit, not Mr Irons. And it has a waist to pull the midsection in and make the shoulders and hips more pronounced. The fabric is a mid-weight worsted wool, the drapes are hangs beautifully and is of course perfectly pressed. This is not a suit you can let develop a few relaxed wrinkles. The jacket has flat pockets and the sleeves have four non-kissing buttons. The buttons do not cross over each other. Every element of it is formal, but what it lacks in flair it makes up for in sophistication. The trousers are pleated, allowing a comfortable fit and even giving room to put your hands in your pockets without pulling the fabric too much. And no cuffs at the bottom of the leg and a full break. Very traditional for suit pants. His shirt is a Windsor, a pinstripe body with a plain white collar, not actually worn by Wall Street brokers until after the eponymous movie. A very businesslike shirt but with a stylish pointed collar, a nice bit of deviance in otherwise stiff upper lip clothing. The tie is a classic striped tie, picking colours out of both his suit and his shirt, and a white pocket square to match the collar. This is truly some understated but masterful colour matching. Straight into another British classic, the pinstripe suit. This is a beautiful charcoal grey pinstripe, with quite a wide gauge between the stripes, whereas his colleague has a narrow gauge pinstripe. It's a two-piece suit, but this time it's a double-breasted style with peak lapels. He's certainly not one to let his guard down. He has paired it with a pinstripe shirt, but you'll notice the shirt has a much wider gauge so as not to clash with the suit. And he has nicely chosen a polka dot tie to avoid causing any cross-eyed confusion while trying to look at his clothing. And again, his rebellious streak shows up in a narrow tie knot. Relaxing at home, I can't help but admire his wonderfully chunky cable knit sweater in what is sadly usually a cold British house. Grey certainly seems to be his colour. He wears it well and it never looks dull. Again, Irons has on a striped Windsor shirt. That is a shirt with a collar and cuffs a different colour to the body, mostly white. In this scene, we see Jeremy at work. Once upon a time, the shirt was actually underwear, which is why I feel a little bit exposed when I'm not wearing a jacket. And I can't wear a jacket while I'm filming because it's my job and I feel a little bit restricted in the shoulders. That's why I love three-piece suits. You can take your jacket off, but you have the vest on, so you still feel like you're dressed. A strong striped necktie, but again, a noticeable difference in scale between the two sets of stripes, so as not to cause any eye strain to family or friends. And of course, a black vest. On his way to meet Anna, his illicit lover, and if you haven't watched the movie, take it from me, this is as illicit as it gets. He dons his overcoat. And if I haven't said it before, let me underline the importance of good outerwear in a cold climate. This is a beautiful three-quarter length black double-breasted cashmere overcoat with peak lapels. Three-quarter length is down to the knee or slightly below, and not only does it give you lots of protection and warmth, but it's quite an unusual length these days, so stands out and will bag lots of admiration. The slanted pockets are a nice touch, as is the dual-toned velvet collar. Descending the stairs, we can really see the cut of the Savile Row suit and how it affects a man's figure. Of course, it helps when you're a movie star with a slim waist like Jeremy Irons, but the cut will enhance any man's figure, especially a custom-made suit. Jeremy is wearing another grey suit, but the lightest one we've seen so far. Again, it's a double-breasted peak lapel suit matched with a Windsor shirt and a polka dot necktie. His style is formal and he wears them, not surprisingly as he is a senior politician with great authority, but he also looks very comfortable in them and quite convincing. One of the most important things to get right when dressing well is to be convincing. Some call it confidence, but that's not quite right. I've seen some men dress up in terrible clothing and look confident, which only makes it worse. You must be as true to the clothes as they are to you, whether it's casual or formal. There is a suit out there for everyone. And if you're enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to hit that like button. It helps bring this video to the attention of other menswear enthusiasts. Thanks. The same pinstripe as before, 
but this time rather than a blue shirt and tie, he has on a red stripe Windsor and a red necktie, which is more suitable for dinner with family in a nice restaurant. The pocket square helps bring attention to the colour. Although Jeremy's sartorial diet is as limited as that of a tofu intolerant vegan with a nut allergy, even he can extend the flexibility of his suits by choosing different shirts and accessories. His next outerwear is a raincoat, as essential as it gets for London, and that can be extended to most of Northern Europe. It's a classic raincoat but quite a loose fit as it looks like it's padded for protection against the cold. It appears ill-fitting and the shoulder pads are very noticeable. It's a little at odds with the rest of his wardrobe. But Jeremy's character does know how to relax in his own way and at the weekend adds smart casual country. From a warm rusty turtleneck under a sports coat at the dinner table or outdoors with a wax jacket and wellies, he is always suitably dressed and in character. Having all the right clothes for the right occasions is a luxury not all of us can afford. His final suit of the movie is a fitting send-off as his personal life and career are over. He's almost dressed for a funeral. As the saying goes, the problem with political suicide is you live to regret it. It's a charcoal grey three-piece with notch lapels. The fabric looks like cashmere, and if you like cashmere but can't afford it, check out flannel as an excellent choice for a warm, soft suiting fabric. And that fabulous three-quarter length overcoat is back. We end with Jeremy in a warm climate where he has decided to lick his wounds and wallow in shame. There's an interesting transition in his wardrobe from top to bottom. It starts off well and descends into sloppiness. He wears a smart mid-brand tweed sports coat, still retaining a semblance of dignity from his former days as a politician, but his pants tell of a lapse into self-pity and surrender. They are a good match colour-wise and the fabric has a suitable texture, but the elasticated cuffs and sandals tell a story of a man that does not care too much anymore and neither the jacket nor the pants fit well. He is a shadow of his former self. And as I said earlier, I will give you a warning at the end of the video. If you're not familiar with the movie, it's an extremely explicit movie. But before you go hitting that search button on Netflix, it's not exactly erotic. We're talking about two damaged people. And the reason I think Jeremy Irons was dressed so well in this movie was to make up for the fact that he spent so much time naked in it as well. I'm really pleased with the community we have here on For the Love of Suits. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notifications button as well. Sometimes people don't get notified about my videos. And thank you for watching through to the end and I'll see you in the next video.